training, I found that the educational environment or the learning environment was most effective when the student or the individual felt at ease and saw that you were concerned for him as an individual or her and also that uh, the educational experience was deeper and more permanent. I can say, cite many examples of this as being the most effective way rather than the approach of course of intimidation or coercion or uh, pre-programmed, you might say, uh, walk through discipline. This provides an environment where the, I believe it's more lasting. The individual in this case would perform to the discipline or the standard required by either flight standards, in this case as I've given an example, or industrial standards. I reflect on this randomly, but it's a uh, it's something that I, as I developed and as I had the opportunity later through my various civilian career and my other courses, schools, etc., primarily with aviation after 35 years to 40 years, I felt uh, with my flying and maintenance background I would like to impart this philosophy in my educational work with other people. As the school opened up the opportunity, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work in a community college vocational environment, I felt that this opportunity was a, a good way to help me develop these skills to ensure that we can develop quality, educated, in this case, aircraft technicians, my primary discipline. Then I uh, I enjoy that very well and very much. I often reflect that I'd like to be able to climb on that transport some night, feel a little bit unsure until I look out the window and see the ground crewman out there working at that airplane and realizing he's one of the students that I helped train and I felt very confident in his abilities or her abilities. It's a challenge and life is a challenge and I enjoy this opportunity of teaching. Um, it's obviously educational always to the instructor first. It's a, a great opportunity to work with a diversified individuals in an educational environment and to help realize that you're forming their future lives. That's a, that's a profound thing to think about from time to time that you're formulating, you have control over their careers. So those are the, some of the expressions that I have. Okay, how do you know what, that your students are getting the best quality education that is possible? To see that my students get the best quality education possible, I usually have to, obviously we have to use a traditional evaluation methods. And they come at different times. We uh, use the traditional, of course, in this particular course that I'm presently teaching. For those of you who may not know, this is an FAA certified, that's Federal Aviation certified program being taught under the community college. This is a licensed program with a very strict curriculum and requires evaluations on every subject to a 70% or better. Well, that answers that. The proficiency is another evaluation that has to be evaluated by my knowledge and background, and uh, that's quite a, uh, a responsibility. So to do this, of course, the traditional testing methods are, are given, written tests, quizzes, and so on. But to do the evaluations on an oral and practical evaluations require uh, the obviously the traditional curriculum and the traditional uh, reports, lab reports and various other reporting methods. But these are based against our skills and our backgrounds or in other words our industrial skills and our previous training. And that's why I think experience in the vocational program, educated instructors are a very necessary thing to industry today 
in whatever discipline because uh, they have a lot to put back to bring the standards up of whichever student that desires that particular discipline. And that's how I perform my evaluations. Tell me about the student from Texas that you told me about before that had been to other uh, training facilities. From time to time we have students from other facilities that we can receive some feedback from of their evaluations of how they perceive this school and this particular department and I enjoy hearing their responses and and use this as a positive uh, feedback for us to evaluate our, um, how do you say it, our uh, growth, our procedures, and how we do things. And one of the recent uh, uh, students we presently have in the school was a uh, transfer who is a Utah, but had taken several courses uh, in the A&P, that's his discipline, in a particular college in uh, Texas. He wasn't particularly happy with that one for several things other than the usual cost factors and the indifference portrayed. But they're adults and they can perceive a lot of things that we sometimes don't understand. He transferred to another course, and uh, rather another school that offered the same subjects in Texas. And at that point, uh, several observances were made by this individual. However, he was proceeding at that school uh, along his uh, vocation, and uh, further things transpired in his life, and of course he had to move to Salt Lake City and was fortunate enough to enroll in our course, and he is very pleased. He extemporaneously mentions to me one day in the hallway that uh, he was glad to be at our program. He felt in comparison this school, although we appear small, we are quite progressive, I like to think. He felt was uh, had uh, great assets, dedicated instructors who were concerned about students as individuals. He felt that we uh, were a very competency-based trained uh, training curriculum and uh, our assets, the program was well balanced and he was very pleased with the facilities and uh, the atmosphere that he has at this college. He, and we were, I was very pleased to hear that. What does the college do to foster excellence in education? What conditions <coughs> or what, how do they allow you to achieve excellence? Well, I believe the college uh, is dedicated in its, of course, its mission to foster excellence in education. And we're, as faculty, uh, uh, reminded of this. And of course, this is, we've been trained on this. Uh, they've selected excellent faculty to foster education. But I think further, the atmosphere, the uh, attitude of the staff and the faculty are, uh, you can see that they're dedicated, uh, feel uh, as a family, I would like to say, towards fostering uh, quality education. And I believe uh, we know that uh, we're adult enough to realize that to survive in a changing environment that we have, uh, life and the industrial environment is a challenge, and especially in this rapidly changing aviation program that it requires us to be on the leading edge, to be state-of-the-art in both faculty trained and our equipment. And we feel that, that we have excellent faculty support. We feel we're right there. We're attuned with the industrial needs. I'm proud to be part of that. What do you do? <laughs> no, that was good. That was really good. What do you do? As educators, teachers, you know. Right. Okay. Um, because teaching is demanding, and because you need to keep yourself at 
tuned up and at peak performance. <laughs> what do you do to maintain a high edge of quality personally? To, to Person your I was going to say, personally, at about 2 o'clock, I open a fifth of whiskey. And <laughs> no, I don't do that. Don't put that in. That's, edit that out, Is please. it two yet? <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> uh, the old leveler. No. To keep myself uh, in balance and, you know, to keep from burning out, very frankly, I, uh, I'm a very aviation-oriented individual. And... Uh, some of my relaxation, frankly, are reading aviation magazines. But we do other things. I have, I'm a grandfather. I have other things to do in my personal life. And uh, this does add a little balance to it. I like to relax. I enjoy good music and uh, theater. And uh, you might say some of those types of style. I, I enjoy museums. I do put a bit of balance to it. Uh, I know that's very necessary to balance your life, to keep yourself in perspective at all times so that you can focus on the intensity you need on your primary positions, whether it's in education or whatever. And, but you also, uh, it, it gives you a chance to balance that, I guess. Okay. Professionally, as a teacher, what do you do to renew? Professionally, as a teacher, to renew my uh, education, I attend workshops and conferences as often as possible as the college lets me. Uh, presently, as with coordinator duties, this is a bit in balance uh, with other responsibilities or takes some of the time I'd like to do. But we interface with industry. Now, in addition to that, I try when possible, obviously, to upgrade formally my education. I do enjoy many workshops and conferences, and I think they're very valuable and they're all positive. That's the key, is always try to take something, in my opinion, whether it's a book, periodical, formal education, a workshop, and turn that so that that's a positive experience. Sometimes we can go to courses that appear drudgery, but it's, a, it's most important to get something positive out of it. Quality in uh, the aviation industry is very important. I would like to give you an example about how I feel about uh, the importance of a quality product, whether it's in, uh, especially in a, such a sophisticated piece of equipment as a 400,000 pound airplane hurtling through the sky at 400 knots or more or a light aircraft. It's all proportional. It's just as important. Once you're away from the environment of the ground, there is no alternative. There is only one way, and that must be operational, perfect, as well as you can. We know of the space in it, incidences. This has brought us home as a nation. There are is uh, really there are nothing there is nothing less than quality. Let me just start over. We all know that uh, flying demands proficiency. We don't want aircraft crashing every minute, and we don't. And the frequency we see them f having incidences or problems, as tragic as, as they are, are extremely infrequent. 
aviation is a very safe environment, very safe. It's very dramatic when there's an incident or a problem. Uh, as a nation, we see these things, but having being in, been involved in an aviation-oriented uh, environment for many, many years, both flying and in maintenance, and having seen various situations, more so than ever today, it's important to teach quality in workmanship, in education, and uh, performance, very competency-based. I'm very dedicated to competency-based education. Uh, critical thinking is an extremely important thing that we're working on now. All of these new bannered terms are very important. They all parallel what have been there for years. Aviation has no room at all for any error. It's obvious as we move down the road in a car, if it sputters and stops, we pull off to the road. It's very difficult in an aircraft when you're airborne to have it sputter and stop. I often teach some students that it's a four-engine airplane is nothing more than a three-engine airplane with the fourth engine operating as a spare from here to Hawaii so that if one engine is shut down, you're still operating on three. A three-engine airplane, thus is a two-engine airplane in case three, and so on down till you get to one engine. When that one engine is dead, there's nothing. You come on down. Well, I use this analogy with students to impress upon them how important it is that every aspect they do is followed as carefully as they can by using the proper technical manuals, procedures, and text. And of course, FAA recognized that many years ago and has performed that and, and professionalized the uh, aviation maintenance industry until they were licensed to a very highly professional level. But that notwithstanding, the key is to motivate the individual so that he will always inspect or perform work or accomplish the product that he is totally sure that it is a safe aircraft or equipment that he's working on. This is the challenge. This is a challenge for every aviation instructor. In fact, it's actually the challenge for every technical or vocational instructor. It's just a bit more profound in an aircraft environment, aviation environment. I'd like to say that uh, being a, an educator and uh, formerly in this uh, college environment now for about seven years, it's been a, a great experience. I joke uh, many times that I have too much fun to draw a check. I have to turn it in. But that's not true, uh, of course. Uh, you don't need to use this. <laughs> but it is fun to be in aviation. and. Uh, continue on and uh, it keeps me live and viable and working with the youth that we're forming, the younger people that we're forming their lives and ensuring that they have this discipline of performing to the highest professional level that they can. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the last